once again this is your host dr gilbert gisharu gizeri coming to your homes once again with the program mazungumzo we really in this program we try to kind of decipher ideas get to the bottom of them try to add our knowledge uh, which helps us to improve our lives make us happy make us more knowledgeable people understand things around us you know so but in this program i always try to make it light because of this times you know with the covid-19 people are sorrowful because they got to stay away from each other and you know people they are they are social creatures you know they want to be together share things together be happy together you know and this pandemic is keeping them away so there's a bit of anxiety so it's good when you share music you know so in this program i always try to open it up with music you know a song sometimes i'm not really a very good singer but you know for the purpose of just keeping the mood it becomes necessary you know to kind of do a bit of drumming or guitar but there you know there are really people who are good at these things but so bear with me this time of chosen a musician Brian Adams a famous musician a song looking into your eyes look into your eyes looking into your eyes looking to my you will see what you mean to me such your heart such your soul and when you find me there you sigh no more don't tell me it's not worth trying for you can tell me it's not worth dying for you know it's true everything i do i do it for you look into our heart you find there is nothing there to hide take me as i am take my love i will give it all out sacrifice don't tell me is not worth fighting for i can help me there is nothing i want more you know it's true everything i do i do it for you there is no love like your love and no other could give more love there is no way unless you are there all the time all the way hey, hey. you can tell me it's not what trying for i can help me there is nothing i want more yeah i'll fight for you i will lie for you i'll walk why for you yeah i die for you you know it's true everything i do baby i do it for you everything i do i do for you brian ad
Adams, looking into your eyes. I think that will relax somebody. It's relaxed me a little bit. Now, I've been trying, because you see, in uh, the history of the indigenous people, if you read V.S. Mundive, those who people who have read, you know, the rediscovery of African knowledge, gnosis, going to the depth of the knowledge of the African people, the indigenous people especially. It becomes very, very, very important when you bring in the indigenous people to go into origins of how the Westerners believe knowledge is acquired. It's very important because without understanding that, you will never understand why the colonizers especially despised the indigenous people wherever they were, if it is the aborigines in Australia, the Kikuyus in Kenya, the Nyosas in South Africa, the Hausa, the Igbo in Nigeria, you will find they were despised by the colonizers. First of all, they say their religions were not good. They were, they were pirates. They didn't worship the true God. They started as serious things as those, ridiculing their ways of life and their cultures. So you see, understanding uh, how the philosophers of the Western world thought knowledge was acquired, it's very, very important to see is there truth that when we say the oral, oral tradition of the indigenous people is enough archive of knowledge for people to revere and to respect that these people had knowledge. And one important thing that I've been trying to stress is that Reading all that there is in how knowledge is acquired, what is the most important thing that actually the Western philosophers themselves say is needed for one to acquire knowledge? When you're going to study the theory of knowledge, as philosophers are called, eh? they are the ones who keep it they keep theory of knowledge in line. What do they say is the most important tool you need to acquire knowledge? It's language. Now, that makes it very, very clear that all human beings, because from creation, they have a language. You go anywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll find that they have knowledge. They have language. You go to Australia, the aborigines have got a language. You go to Papua New Guinea, they have got a language. You come to Hawaii, they have language. You go to Kenya, Kikuyus have got a language. You go to South Africa, the Nyosas, they have a language. So that tells you that they have the tool necessary to acquire knowledge. And they had acquired through their oral traditions all their values, all their education, epistemology, pedagogy, name it. Very, very elaborate cultures, broad had been acquired by those people before the colonizers came. And you can see the philosophers in the West have struggled over years from Descartes to Jacques Derrida. They have struggled to see 
what is the most important thing for a human being to have so that he could acquire knowledge? And Ludwig Wittgenstein calls it language game. Owen Manquine, he calls it words, word and object. For you to be able to define the objects in the world, you need a word and then you'll be able to define object. So you see, you're, straight, you're starting to see that there is admission that once a society or a community has language, there is no way it can have no very elaborate knowledge. Because once you have a language, the rest becomes history because you have to survive in your environment, go to better your life. And the struggle of human beings when they use language, they are not searching for truth. They are not searching for objective reality. They are not trying to be logical. They are not trying to use reason. All those are Western words that they have brought in to elevate their knowledge. But every person uses his language as he sees fit for his survival and surviving in the environment to, make, to better his life. Shelter, food, clothing, and the necessity of able to get food. Food, shelter, clothing. And these are very, this is it's very, 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 very important for somebody to know that all what language helps people to do is to better the lifestyle, to better their lives. So when you look at Descartes, Descartes says we think, so we are. And we know because we think we are. And from there, the struggle of body and mind comes in. Struggle of body and mind. There is that struggle you find in Descartes' time that human beings have a mind. And the mind is fed from outside, from the spiritual uh, world is fed with ideas and is like a factory of ideas and knowledge and it comes from inside going outside. That's where trouble starts now because most of the people started to think that the wisdom that people have come from outside is given unto human beings and the human being channel it outside. But as time goes on, and only, it's the other way around. Language helps us to use sentences, to use words, to be able to define our environment and cope with the environment. Every time a human being is using language to see that he betters himself. So, uh, let's say Fringe, F R G. He was a philosopher. Burton Russell, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Oman van Quine, Edmund Hassel, Martin Heidegger, Sanders Spears. All these philosophers, even Dewey, they come to accept that language is the most important tool for a human being to have to acquire knowledge. 
And Ludwig Wittgenstein in the, in the Vienna circle, he actually says words are tools to help ma uh, human beings manage their existence in the environment. To better themselves, they got to use words as tools to better their lives. So every indigenous people to cope with the environment, because you see, they had to eat, they had to clothe themselves, they had to shelter themselves. And then they had to saturate their spiritual aspects. They had, uh, they, they, they had to use their language effectively to see that they get those things from the environment. They are able to build a nice house. They are able to get food. And as they do this, they are educating themselves. It, it is, it, it's such an important thing to to be able to survive within the environment. So you can see that the philosophers of the West, Charles Sanders Pierce, Whitehead, Roti, Richard Roti, Jackis Derrida, Putman, David Davidson, all these big philosophers they kind of arrived at one big understanding that is really people trying to search for truth, objective reality, and all this. Is it really their reason why they are living? And they have found it's not true. A human being is struggling to just in any survive in the harsh environment, the, the world and is to cope with it. And the biggest thing which allows him to do that is language. And luckily enough, you can see that all indigenous people, may it be their aborigines in Australia, people of Papua New Guinea, French Fridge Shaw, Vanuatu, Igbos in Nigeria, Hausas in Nigeria, Kikuyus in Kenya, Wazaramo, Wachaga in Tanzania, and Nosas in Tanzania. They all had a language. They all have a language. And that tells you they were able to acquire knowledge. And you see, these things are very important because actually if you don't realize and come to know that language is actually the basis of all what human beings know, you're going to start respecting things which have got nothing to do with knowledge. And the word others and despising others, it comes from the fact that we did not know how important it is to respect languages wherever you found them. Because if you kill languages, actually you kill a people's knowledge. But you go to read very carefully. You go to read every, every even if it's Rudolf Kana. Although he is very, very mathematical, Using formulas, over one coin, he uses formulas and all these kind of things, very, very mathematical. But that is because language, you got to have axioms or formulas to be able to use less words. It's just like hieroglyphics. It's like saying E equal M C squared. Einstein. He had to get something brief as that's a formula. Now, it does not mean if you find that nurses don't have formulas, then they don't have a way to acquire knowledge. That is not 
then that's not an equivalent. It, because that's physics, chemistry, and biology, and natural sciences going up like that, you know. So actually what the philosophers did, they, like the Vienna Circle, they tried to bring in formulas, mathematics, the language of mathematics, symbols, and figures were introduced into language. Now, do you mean the nuances at one time would not have arrived less, less bit with time? They start coming up with formulas. You can't say no. Look at the weaver bird, how it builds its nest, and it's just a bird. So I think just because the Vienna Circle introduced analytic philosophy into philosophy, it did not make the, the, the language of the Westerners different from the indigenous people. It's just an advancement of language. Just like the old Egyptians in Kemet, they had hieroglyphics. They used symbols a lot to define their surroundings. So until we meet again, this is your host, uh, Dr. Gilbert Kisharu Gudere. You know, just come into your homes with uh, something to entertain you during and to cut to cut, you know, mental gymnastics, mental gymsta gymnastics. Might be I have given you something to ponder about. And until we meet again, this is your host saying ciao ciao.